Well, thanks for having me. Uh, excited to be here at the Mortgage Innovators uh, Conference and uh, for being able to do this tech talk on how digitizing appraisal inspections can reduce bias. My name is Keenan Chen. I'm the Executive Vice President of Corporate Strategy for Clear Capital. And our, our focus at Clear Capital is, is on in improving lives. That's one of our core values. Um, so this topic is is near and dear to my heart in terms of how technology can really help to uh, to improve lives. So what I'm going to be covering um, during this tech talk is a little background about the housing market climate, just to kind of reorient orient ourselves um, and talk a little about about post COVID um, and those impacts, and then go into one one potential um, opportunity and solution coming out of of this time around digitizing the inspection process and um, and what has led to that in terms of technology, um, the, the revolution and innovation of technology that's made that possible, and then how that actually impacts um, a potential bias uh, within the, the valuation process. So let me jump right in. Um, I don't need to give you guys, you know, uh, too many, too many uh, slides on on the housing market. You're all aware of this, but um, uh, but it's been an incredibly competitive market for everyone. Um, we've got record low housing supply, as as we know, and it was interesting to look back over uh, our data from 2019 to now and see really how how radical that shift has been in terms of the the reduction of supply, um, and even this year. Um, we haven't even seen the typical seasonal uh, gain we have in, in inventory from January to, to now. Um, and so it's incredibly competitive for home buyers um, uh, in, in terms of being able to purchase homes. Um, but it's also a competitive market for, for lenders. Um, the, the, the expectations are, are, are really high when it comes to uh, the amount of pressure around um, uh, the loan process. We've also seen um, incredible home price appreciation over the past year. Our April report um, shows almost a 13% year-over-year uh, gain in terms of home prices, and that's driven up concerns about, about overvaluation, about the, the potential of overvaluation. Um, and uh, with record levels of home equity being, being created, um, uh, there's, there's a lot of, of uh, uh, focus on the, the 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 value of properties, and and a lot of focus from borrowers and and from homeowners trying to understand what value they have in their property, and and that's all with the backdrop as well as a conversation, a national conversation on potential bias uh, being in the system. A number of borrowers have raised their hands uh, with concerns around whether there's discrimination and bias as part of the the value process. So that's 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 the backdrop for what's been going on. And out of COVID-19, uh, um, there's been lingering impacts. Um, there's uh, uh, been flexibilities that have been put in place um, to allow the appraisal process to be uh, more seamless when it comes to uh, increasing capacity, uh, when it comes to uh, the, the speed of, of the process. and and also promoting social distancing and not allowing uh, appraisers to come into to homes where there's concern around um, around COVID. So there's new expectations that have been set that credible appraisals can happen without the appraiser visiting the home, whether that's exterior appraisals, uh, desktop appraisals, and also the homeowner being involved in, in gathering that inspection data. Waivers have been the norm. What we've seen is is a, an incredible growth in the percentage of of appraisal waivers for non cash out refis. According to recursionist data, we see that be almost 70 percent, 68 percent or so on average. Um, whereas with purchases, uh, also the the waiver percentage has increased, but but not to the same extent. We're we're at around an average of uh, of 12 percent uh, for for waivers when it comes to, to, to purchases. And uh, that lower waiver percentage, as we move into a market of uh, a record purchase volume expected in 2021, that lower waiver percentage will drive the need for other options because we're going to see more appraisals 
um, as, as a percentage of loans. The FHFA has responded to this, this market in a couple ways in, in calling for uh, information on appraisal modernization and calling for a response uh, from, from the industry. And they asked for uh, how we're considering new ways to approach uh, capacity and the, the, the constraints around the number of appraisers uh, available to handle all of the, the demand uh, around new ways to approach lender tools and the tools that are given to lenders to, to deal with um, uh, understanding valuation during this time. And then also new ways to approach the topic of racial bias and, and whether that is, is uh, a growing part of the process, something that needs to be addressed. Um, the director of the, of the FHFA uh, has this quote, the modernizing the appraisal process has the potential to create a more streamlined and accurate collateral valuation process, but if it's not properly adopted, it can have negative unintended consequences. So all of this, uh, th this climate is, is actually fueling innovation, fueling the opportunity to, to move forward. So I'm gonna focus on one particular aspect of this, which we call the, the digital inspection as an opportunity, perhaps to respond to all three of those, those topics, the need for greater accuracy, uh, the need for greater speed and capacity, uh, but also uh, the ability to, to reduce potential bias. So what is the digital inspection? Well, the way that we describe it is that uh, it is, it's really home data being captured uh, digitally with a mobile device right at the, right at the home or right at the property. Uh, the traditional method is, is that uh, photos are, are perhaps taken you know, a clipboard is used to write down information about the home um, or, or information is sourced from other places. But what we're talking about is as, as much as possible capturing the, the, the physical home digitally right, right from the beginning, right at uh, uh, the property. And this can be done uh, to produce automated floor plans. Um, there's been a number of companies that have developed 3D capture processes um, that, uh, that, that capture the home and, and even having a complete digital twin of that home. So you see both the inside and outside in a digital format. And, and that technology is, was created um, uh, so that it becomes easier for not only the people viewing the home to see it in a virtual uh, manner, uh, but also so that technology can help guide that process to ensure that all of the data that's needed is captured in the right format. The traditional process and the digital process um, have some specific differences when it comes to number one, accuracy. What we've seen in the traditional, in the traditional process is that uh, th there's certainly a standard out there uh, for how inspection should be done, but perhaps it's applied in an inconsistent way. There's different techniques that people have or, or preferences. Sometimes it's rounding up to the, to the, the, the foot or, or to the inch uh, when it comes to measurement. But in the digital world with technology, we have the opportunity to make that a standardized principle. Um, the fidelity of, of the home, often with traditional appraisals, uh, just the exterior walls are captured on the sketch. So there's minimal visual detail. But in a digital inspection, there's the opportunity for it to be an in-depth visual, um, in-depth visual with high fidelity, uh, even on a sketch, things like interior walls and, and fixtures being present. Uh, from a scalability standpoint, it's a significant learning curve to really do a, a full interior inspection uh, to, to measure the property. This is something that takes you know, years of, of training. Um, but in the digital world, it's, it's possible that anyone with a smartphone could quickly learn how to, uh, to do this. That would be the ideal situation. Um, and then in terms of in integrity, you know, we've seen over the past year with COVID, a number of homeowner apps to have the homeowners provide information on the inspection. Um, but there's been concern around, uh, is anyone gaming the system? You know, what sort of anti-fraud tools are, are, are present? Um, with the digital process, it's possible to put in anti-fraud tools so that data can be safely collected by anyone. So there's been a, a, a number of advances within technology that have perhaps made this, this digital inspection process 
uh, uh, much more attainable. We saw a few years ago with Matterport introducing their, uh, their 3D capture camera um, that was extremely expensive. That was $3,400. I think the, the Pro 2 now is about $3,400. Uh, uh, it has to be on a tripod, but provided you know, pretty amazing fidelity in terms of capturing the whole home in 3D. Um, that evolved to, to uh, Ryko uh, having uh, cameras now, uh, more consumer uh, focused, about $300. Uh, also, you still need a tripod uh, to to, um, to really capture the home effectively, but a lot more attainable. Um, but now, um, advances have been made right within uh, uh, the, the the smartphone using techniques like lidar um, to to make the process really attainable by by anyone that already has a phone to capture the whole home in, in a digital format. And I didn't put a price. We all know the iPhone is somewhat expensive, but chances are um, people already own a smartphone that has this capability. So within the phone, there's pretty amazing features um, that, that would help someone capture uh, the, the property in the digital format. Uh, again, LiDAR, GPS, a gy gyroscope, compass, all of these things help orient uh, a phone to know where it's pointing, and where it is in the home to, to be able to um, put some, some reference points to the imagery. And then with the processing power of modern, of modern phones, that, that data can be captured in, in great fidelity um, and, and in great detail uh, so that that imagery could then be processed by uh, photo AI and, and machine learning techniques um, to actually be able to get accurate measurements, accurate rendering of, of fixtures, interior walls, all of that is, is now possible um, right from your phone. In fact, hybrid appraisals have driven um, the, this, this, this push of innovation uh, to be able to adopt some of this technology right now, not waiting for the future, but right now. Uh, the increased scope of a hybrid appraisal process, um, the property data collection needs to include more data and more inputs. Um, so that the home can be brought virtually back to the appraiser at their desk. Um, there's also increased requirements around the standardization of that data and, uh, and how those data points are submitted to different interested parties like the GSEs. Um, and then because some of the goals of, of hybrid appraisals are really around increasing capacity in the industry, uh, that means bringing other workforces besides appraisers uh, uh, into the process like uh, in our case, we use real estate agents and brokers, but training those other workforces um, uh, is is important to to maintain the same level of quality. Um, and so, using mobile apps to guide them through that process has become something that's again pushed that innovation. What we found is that the results um, of these of these new uh, processes, the results of digital inspections, have been extremely successful. Um, we use Kubacasa as our uh, digital inspection technology to, to scan the home and produce a floor plan. And, and we've actually seen less variance uh, between uh, multiple people visiting the same home than we see with the traditional process. Uh, in, in cases of, of significant uh, variance in terms of gross living area, we've seen no cases of significant variance um, for gross living area uh, even though we do see that happen with the traditional process. So there's actually the opportunity for this to actually be more accurate uh, than what we expect today. So how does all of this affect bias, um, or, or at least the, the, the potential of bias? Now, first, let me give some more information on what do I mean when I talk about, about bias. And uh, in this case, I'm talking about the, the opportunity for there to be uh, a racial bias in the process that could be impacting the accuracy of, uh, of, a, of a value. Um, first of all, there's systemic bias. Uh, there's really three different categories of, of bias to, 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 to add a little background here. There's systemic bias, which is um, you know, widespread continued impact from things like previous housing policies, uh, you know, redlining being an example of that. And, and that impact would also be present uh, perhaps over many years and then within the data itself. 
There's Im implicit bias, which is um, where there could be potential disparate impact from from unconscious bias or or unconscious um, uh, techniques um, that, uh, that that create a disparate impact. And then explicit bias would be uh, cases where there's actually deliberate actions or uh, 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 decisions being made based on personal prejudice. And in all of these cases, we found that the that, that one thing that's important is increasing the accuracy and, and the fidelity of data uh, so that the things that are really the facts remain the facts, and that raises the hurdle for potential bias. So when it comes to digital inspections, the reason why we're, we're excited about this is that uh, standardization and consistency are, are a huge part of, of the digital inspection experience. Um, the consistency of, of having a technology-enabled process means that borrowers see that the same process is happening and there's a consistent experience. Um, the home facts, applying things like ANSI for understanding gross living area uh, become uh, uh, a process that allows the home facts to be the home facts. Um, they shouldn't change unless the home has changed. Uh, a measuring technique should not vary uh, from, from home to home, from geographic area to geographic area. And, and using technology helps to standardize that. As well as uh, the actual capture and the results of that can be uh, uh, shared and be more transparent where it's clear what was considered for gross living area and what wasn't. In the case of this picture, uh, the red area was not considered for gross living area based on our current uh, standards. And these accurate facts help the, to, to increase the likelihood of an accurate conclusion. We know there's a strong correlation between the gross living area and, and the concluded value. And so the more accurate we can, we can be with, with these facts, uh, the, the, the better chance there is that, that the conclusion of value will also be accurate. And these additional inputs of data coming into the system also improve downstream models like automated valuations, which rely upon accurate data uh, for, um, for machine learning and other techniques. This technology also enables a diverse workforce. Uh, we talked about um, being able to bring in uh, uh, other, other folks and train them on the process uh, by aided by technology. Uh, bringing the home in a virtual format and a digital format to the appraiser Let's just do new things like being able to work with disabled veterans uh, to do desktop appraisals. It lets us build immersive tech that allows uh, appraiser trainee programs uh, to, to, to get started and to attract new talent. And also mobile tech allows homeowners to have more input to the process in a way that doesn't create additional risk. So in summary, now is the right time for change. The technology is here not only to help with the current market climate, um, uh, there's a great quote of never letting a good crisis go to waste. And I think this is one of those instances where uh, the need for capacity, the need for accuracy um, is uh, fueling this innovation. Uh, that innovation is, is available to, uh, to us now right within our, our pocket, the, the, right within our phone. Uh, instead of using expensive equipment, really this can be rolled out um, at scale. And, and the results of this, results of a more accurate, consistent uh, process for, for digital inspections really does continue to fuel the opportunity we have uh, to look for uh, ways to improve our process to, uh, create, uh, to, to create equality and make sure that the facts are the facts. So I appreciate your time and uh, have a good rest of the conference. If you'd like to learn more, you can go to our website and, uh, and get this presentation. Thank you so much.